Schoolization, the act of force-fitting a notion or concept into a real-life context, or vice versa, for teaching purposes resulting in a somewhat absurd lesson or exercise that would never be considered outside of a teaching facility. I made this word up, though schoolization didn't seem to find its way into a dictionary, it can find its way into our pedagogical practices. Math courses are especially prone to schoolization, but no program is really immune to its charms. With the best of intentions, of course, we sometimes turn some elements of everyday life into a school problem, exercise, or activity that simply doesn't make sense anymore. As if the classroom were a place where the nonsensical was inevitable and accepted for teaching purposes. Need an example? Your school applied for a grant in order to do some renovations, but didn't get it. So you decide to pitch in with your friends. You want to build a fence around the school's octagon-shaped playground. Now, if one of the sides of the playground measures the square root of x minus 3 feet, and the eighth of the surface of the playground is 120 square yards, how much fence should you get? More importantly, just how ridiculous is this? What playground has such a shape? How is calculating this easier than actually measuring what it is you want to fence? Just go outside and measure it. Who would know how many square yards there are in an eighth of a given surface and that the side of this area is the square root of a certain number of feet, but not know the perimeter of that area? How is the introduction to this problem even remotely relevant to math? How is this context useful for learning? Not very much so. It might even hinder. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should avoid using real-life context in problems or learning situations. What I am saying, though, is to be careful not to create some contrived, off-kilter learning situation for the sake of putting notions into context. How can technology help us in avoiding this? Well, I think that how we teach has a lot to do with what we teach, and that has a lot to do with how we teach, which of course has a lot to do with, well, you get the idea. I believe that one of the first things to consider is the computer's tremendous potential as a production tool. Something you can use to create stuff and challenge ideas with, but I'll get back to that. The computer can also take care of tedious computations or help us with grammar and spelling, thus freeing up some cognitive space to play with the more interesting concepts of our subject matter. For instance, calculating the standard deviation of a series of a dozen or so entries is doable, but who would ever consider computing this by hand in real life, where series often count hundreds of entries? The computer can calculate the mean and the standard deviation, find the median and the mode in a matter of nanoseconds. Now that we have all this information, we can spend more time analyzing the data than fiddling around with calculations. If I let the computer help with the computable, then I, the pedagogue, can take better care of the meaningful. This doesn't mean we shouldn't teach how to calculate things or how to use proper grammar, of course, but I'm pretty sure learners would largely benefit from our devoting a little bit more of that time to analyzing, evaluating, and creating. The top of good old Bloom's taxonomy, if you will. The other way technology can actually prevent schoolization is how it helps us tackle the larger picture, the broader, more complex reality. Schoolization often happens when we teachers try to simplify things, when we morsel the complex and turn it into something we consider more digestible, more learnable. The mistake here is in thinking that we learn from the simple to the complex. In my opinion, simplifying a rich reality is probably a better learning activity than it is a teaching strategy. The creative process involved in preparing a lesson or a learning situation forces us to make more connections, and these connections are at the root of worthwhile learning. You get the concept because you've done the work. So let your learners get in on the fun as well. So if we let the learner use technology for simulations to organize their ideas or to challenge them, to experiment and to create, I think we can steer clear of schoolization. In a nutshell, there are three things to consider in avoiding schoolization. One, if a context doesn't really fit a certain notion or concept, don't use it. These things either help or hinder. Down the line, you're the one making that choice. If it's calculations you want to check on, are the swimming pools, backyards, curtains, paint cans, and pizzas really useful? Two, if a context is really rich and complex, 
perhaps we should consider letting the learners have a go at it. Let them try to explain this reality using all the mathematical tools they have. Don't draw it all out for them. You'll ruin the learning potential. 3. Technology is great at helping with both of the prior. Let the computer take care of the computable and let learners use computers to explore and explain the meaningful.